in live events. No? No, it hasn't started. Okay. Ah. Hello, McFly. <coughs> Scheduling <coughs> schedule a new event. No. No. <coughs> Hmm. All right. How did I do it before? Ah, oh, there we go. No, I am live. Must be some sort of huge, huge delay or something. So, there you go. Live control room. All right. Yeah, I've been going for 43 seconds. Okay. There is some huge delay um, with YouTube, actually, um, on my channel, <clears throat> where it uh, uh, it wouldn't tell me that I was live, even though I was, because it's been going, it's been logging it for a minute or so. So that's weird. Okay. All right, but I'm live. Hey, hi everyone. All. Hang on, nine of you. It was last time. Live control room, you're live. View on watch page, ingestion settings. How do I actually go there now? Oh, here we go, comments. Comments, I got no comments. No, okay, what's going on? <clears throat> no, no comments at all. Three concurrent, yay, there we go, yep. Yep, I am. Okay, so it's all the delay thing. All right, yeah, these live things, there's lots of huge delay on these things. From the last time I did YouTube live, it the delay was anywhere from like 15, 20 seconds up to like two minutes, depending on where you were. So, uh, yeah, you've got a 30 second delay. Harrit. All right, yep. Yeah, but takes some time. Yeah, all right. Okay, cool. I'm learning all this stuff. This is uh, why I'm doing it. I'm learning it all. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's not easy. See, you know, I've wasted two and a half minutes of my live show just dicking around trying to figure out this sort of stuff. But now I do know. So I know that uh, it delays turning up on there. Anyway, I'm using um, X split this time I'm giving it a try I got a with my um, Ava media um, HDMI capture card I got a um, X split uh, uh, promo code like a three month uh, trial of the pro version or something it expires like in three days so <laughs> I thought I'd try it and uh, yeah I'm broadcasting at four megabits per second apparently um, I can set it to any level, I just set it to 4 megabits, so I don't know, I'm streaming in 720p, so 720p at 4 megabits should be awesome, super high quality, so, uh, yeah, alright, it's, uh, it's telling me I've got a couple of dropped frames, I'm getting dropped frames, I've got 800 dropped frames out of 6,000 dropped frames on my broadcast. I'm not I'm not getting any drop frames on my recording because I, I am recording this locally to the hard drive as well um, so I want to test that. Um, currently 12 megabytes file size yes drop frames it's popped up with a message drop frames but hey it, if you guys can tell me that the video quality is good um, oh Right, it's a small video in the corner, is it? Hang on. Let me... Oh. Browser does... Oh, this machine's new. It doesn't support HTML5 or something. I don't know. I can't even view my own video. Hang on. I'll just go inside and view it.
Yep, okay, I see it. So it is a small video in the corner. Yeah, I was, <laughs> yeah. All right, I don't know how to use XSplit yet. I like just installed it like 10 minutes ago and I was getting the uh, blue screen of death. Um, but that was due to, it wasn't due to XSplit, although XSplit seemed to uh, make the issue happen. It was a, a Marvel disc controller, apparently, that, that I installed. So I uninstalled that and it's working beautiful now. So I do actually like XSplit. I've just got to figure out how to put this thing layout. Position, 640 by 360. How do you... No. Well, can I go... Surely I don't have to... 1280 by 720. Surely I don't have to type in... There we go. I'm full. <laughs> oh, okay. There's, there's slider bars. Okay. Oh, like, right. Look at that. Okay. So I can just... I can just move that anywhere. That's, that's pretty groovy, actually. <laughs> so I can just move this anywhere in that window. Okay, nice. Yeah, the whole idea is that you set up all these different scenes. and So it's more complicated than it needs to be. If you just got one camera and you want to go live with this XSplit, you know, you've got to, it's not that it, <laughs> it doesn't work first go. You've got to just uh, set it up. So you, there you go. 1280 by 720. There you go. But it's um it's cropped. It's 4-3 aspect ratio. Um why? <laughs> I'm not sure why. Uh anyway, I am not going to muck around with that now. The whole idea is that it's 2.20 p.m. Um I'm going to shoot my mailbag. I just thought I'll I'll hook this thing up and go live and yeah. Why the hell not? Um, yeah, fail. <laughs> Thanks, affordable spot. Well, I I, I think use XSplit seems pretty user friendly. I, I was fairly happy. It was fairly obvious how to do everything. It didn't work with my Tagano microscope for my HDMI uh, card. Um, so I have to check into why that's the case. Um, I don't know, I might need driver installation or something like that. So, uh, yeah, all right. 24 megabyte file size. It, it, like, it, it tells you everything. It tells you the number of dropped packets. I've got 1,600 dropped frames out of 12,300. That's at four megabits per second. So, um, I've got an 8 megabits per second upload connection, so I thought I'd just uh, actually push it, you know, to the highest quality possible and uh, and see if that does the business. So anyway, I am broadcasting in uh, 1280 by 720. Yeah, it's supposed to be 16.9 aspect ratio, so I'm not sure. And the camera, uh, the I'm using a... Logitech C920 webcam. The audio may not be great. I'm using the built-in mics. I've turned off the right sound thing so it doesn't auto compress the audio and stuff like that. So I've turned that off. So when I go over to the bench, my audio might level might drop. Uh, no, that's not a bald spot. No, that's just my that's just my hair. No, nah, it's not a bald spot. <coughs> Um, all right, so yeah, all right, I'll figure out later why I'm doing that. Anyway, four megabits per second, 192K audio, uh, locally saved into the hard drive, and also streaming in 720p to YouTube Live. So there you go, pretty happy with that. 920 in California, huh? Uh, yeah, if you want to watch this whole thing, you're not a very big fan of XSplit, hey Brian? Well look, I'm not a fan. I've tried like three other programs and I had issues with every single one of them. So like, you know, yeah, the camera shouldn't be 4.3. Uh, yeah, the camera's not 4.3. Camera is 16.9. It's a Logitech C920. I mean, you know, it's... <laughs> Device info. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know why it's given it. Yeah. Anyway. 
anyway I'm not going to muck around with that now I'm just going to uh, record mailbag so uh, yeah I'll put my monitor over like that so I can see it make sure I'm still transmitting and everything so but it should be good quality the video should be good quality um, even though it's 4.3 so here we go lab's a bit of a mess but there you go there we go all right ready to go yeah sorry I'm probably just gonna forget this is on and I'm gonna shoot uh, my mailbag so thanks for joining me live guys it's not designed to be a live show it's just designed to uh, so that you can look in and just uh, if you've got nothing better to do I don't know <laughs> I'm sure there's lots of stuff better to do than watch me shoot a video but anyway Whacking a fresh battery. It's not my high capacity one. I don't know where my. Oh, it's in my other camera. All right. I've already formatted my memory card. Sweet. All right. I assume we're still going over there. Yep. All right. I'm not sure what the recording quality is going to be like. It's supposed like four four megabits is plenty. Should be plenty for a 720p uh, thing. I like. I'm going to give up. Like it's not worth live streaming in absolute full HD like 1920 by uh, 1080 it's just you know it's not worth it like you know semi HD in, um, in, in 720p is more than enough for these types of live shows of course I record on my camera in full HD so everything's right there sorry I'm gonna be off frame here for a second because I need a wide shot so studio lights are on all right <coughs> check check I'm in the correct uh, mode, aperture mode, yep, yep, everything's, my white balance is right, yeah, everything's fine. All right, here we go. Hi, welcome to everyone's favorite segment, Mailbag. And yes, I'm actually shooting this one live again. Um, <laughs> there's my little, uh, there's my little, yep, no, I'll start. Hang on. Start again. Hi, welcome to everyone's favorite segment, Mailbag. And once again, there are some people watching me live on this one. There's my little uh, Logitech C920 webcam and I'm using, uh, I'm broadcasting to my second channel, EEV Blog uh, 2. Uh, yeah, EV, EV blog 2. Link is down below. If you below on the live camera, there we go. Um, it, on the recording camera, and I'm uh, streaming this live. There's a couple of dozen people watching me. I think I just uh, tried it. I'm using new XSplit software. Anyway, here we go. Continue with the regular mailbag. I'm going to forget the live show is actually running. But if you do want to see me uh, shoot these things live, then you can um, hang out. It's going to take a couple of hours, so people at home you could be there for a while anyway here we go everyone's favorite segment mailbag I've got a ton of stuff again look at this absolutely unbelievable I don't think I'll be able to get through it all in the one video but hey let's give it a go all right what to start with knife Ah, uh, whatever. Oh, no, I've got, got another one here. Jeez. Any others lying around? Got to rub out names. I mean, uh, not names, addresses. It's a pulse processor. Alright. I have no idea what an EDX pulse processor is, but that's what's inside this box, so, <laughs> from Germany. 
but I'll keep up the illusion I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, a lot of people say it's a spoiler if they know what's inside. If I, so, I rub out the rub out the thing on there, and uh, yeah, all right. Oh man, ton of stuff, ton of stuff. I'm not going to have enough time to shoot it and edit it today, probably. Oh, I hope I will. Um, no, actually, I'll, I'll, I'll like this one. I'm going to open this one first. I have no idea, no idea what it is, um, but I love the title on the box. So here we go. Uh -oh. Where did I put my hold? See, where did I put my pen? My marker pen I just used. Where the hell did I put it? Here we go. I put it. I did put it back where it's supposed to be. Forgot to rub out a phone number. There we go. All right. Oh. Oh. Alright, first up we've got one from Albert, won't try and pronounce his last name, from a rapper Schwill in Switzerland. And the thing I like about it, yes, I am Sir Dave Jones, the Receptor. That could be like a wrestling name or something like that, the Receptor. Yes, I am. Awesome. So, thank you very much, Albert. Let's uh, crack this one open. No idea what's in here. Um, nothing was marked on the outside, but hi to all my Swiss viewers. Um, this is, how does this box open? Yeah. Here we go. That's the way to do it. Oh, look at this. Lots of uh, mains adapter. Look, mains adapters. I'll come in handy. Oh, oh, a buttload of them. Unbelievable. Look at this. Bunch of uh, double adapters. These are Australian, of course. Australian uh, double adapters. I'll come in handy. <laughs> All the way from Switzerland. I'm not uh, exactly sure why. Is there a note in here? You need then telephone. Australian telephone. I do need a corded phone. Ah, oh, if it is, and it works, I do need one. Um. So awesome. Is there a note?
Yes, I thought the name was familiar. Um, Albert, yes, he uh, visited the lab uh, here back in March, and I think I tweeted a photo of him uh, back then. Um, yeah, if you want to visit the lab, um, yeah, I do uh, <laughs> let people drop by. You just have to give me a, uh, a heads up. So, yes, thank you very much, Albert. And uh, he's included, uh, yeah, mains, double adapters, uh, and a show view device, which, so it's not a speakerphone thing. I do need a speakerphone, by the way, because I've got a new VoIP thing about to be set up here. I'm ditching bloody Telstra, and I need a uh, like a hands-free um, phone. I've got a VoIP uh, adapter, but yeah, a nice hands-free phone would be good. Anyway, uh, Uniden, I've also included a Uniden telephone, only available in Australia. Oh, okay, so it has included that, and a quick search into the show view device. Uh, I'm not sure, what's show view? Anyway, there is no show view device unless it's in the box as well. So let's have a look. No. No. I've got myself a Uniden telephone, which is absolutely awesome. Thank you very much, Albert. But uh, where is this show, do, show view device? I've got no idea. Well, I couldn't find it in the box and it just dawned on me. That's right, Albert left it with me. He physically hand delivered it when we were, uh, when he was here and uh, visited the lab. And uh, it's some sort of um, VCR recording, uh, you know, device. I don't know, niche sort of uh, recording device. No idea. We'll do a very quick teardown. Nineteen ninety to nineteen ninety three gem star. Woohoo!
and it's one of those annoying uh, press fit cases. I'm I'm just going to be brutal with this thing. I'll come back in a sec. Jesus. Ugh. It's unbelievable. It's not coming up. There's a screw in there somewhere. And I don't know where. What a bastard. Finally got the bastard open. That was a real effort, let me tell you. But ah, oh, look at this, classic. Look at the bodge soldering on that. They've converted that. Um, looks like it was a through hole tack switch into a surface mount tack switch there. And ah, oh, look at the flux residue around that and the amount of solder that they got on that. That is just truly awful. They've got a couple of uh, infrared LEDs up the top corner here, just poking out and. Uh, who knows, is that some sort of custom process that need to get in there and have a look, but look, end, end on resistors. This looks like it could have come out of the early 80s, not the 90s. I mean, this was early 90s. Unbelievable. Oh, that's just like classic sort of, you know, made in Singapore, or made in Singapore early 80s uh, kind of <laughs> computer construction. Oh, awful.
Got to uh, whack my macro lens on. As I said before, I shoot all this in uh, sequence. So, uh, how's the live feed going? I'm assuming it's still going. How's everyone chatting over there? Everyone's having a good chin wag. Get Thor's hammer. <laughs> Uh, all right. Ah, oh, forty second delay between the drop cam and the and here. Okay, interesting. I didn't think about the drop cam. <clears throat> anyway, yeah, I've got to change lenses all the time for every shot. That's why this mail bag. It might be like forty minute final video. It'd probably take me three hours to shoot it. Um, anyway, here we go. There you go, custom Gemstar. ASIC whatever it is pro it could just be a uh, micro uh, controller or something like that that's what most likely but yeah they branded it themselves One of the interesting things to note, <laughs> good back in the good old days, you used to use the uh, color burst frequency crystal 3.579544. Uh, I still remember that uh, off the top of my head because you know crystals were expensive back in the day, so you'd uh, salvage them out of uh, you know TVs and um, and you would reuse the things, and they were just like the common, uh, the cheapest common available crystal frequency, either the PAL or the NTSC color burst frequency anyway um, this thing's uh, yeah uh, you know it's designed to be used with uh, some gem star uh, TV uh, system some remote control thing they've got a, quite a few LEDs in here poking out the corners I guess they wanted to um, get the thing you know all over the re basically reception anywhere they could why this one is mounted vertically and this one's mounted at right angles I'm not sure but anyway <laughs> interesting so there you go thank you very much Albert not terribly interesting but that that is not 1990s construction. That is like early 80s. That is horrid. Ugh, makes my skin crawl. All right. That's one. Yeah. Sent me lots of power adapters. Very useful. These ones are really handy, I find, because you can uh, put them on the, um, you know, on the end point and just get an extra uh, power point out of it. So very handy. They're going to be great. I need one. Of, I need a couple of those for home. Actually, I meant to get some more. I was just looking at that this morning. What a coincidence. Um, God, this mat is filthy. This mat is filthy as. Oh, found another one. Found another one, which I've already opened, by the way. The wife opened it. <laughs> uh. <coughs> This one I forgot. Uh, I had this one. The wife uh, opened it, <laughs> so we'll just do it very quick. It's from um, Hackaday because um, Hackaday have. Um, I am a judge in the Hackaday contest, the Hackaday prize. There it is. They've uh, sent me a couple of small size T-shirts. Awesome! If you are going to send me T-shirts, small size, please. I've got a whole bunch of Hackaday IO prize stickers. Um, Sagan's already taken some of those. The wife opened it, and I got the uh, 
Um, uh, there's a name for this uh, symbol, the, yeah, the, you know, skull and spanner or something like that. Awesome. Lots of excellent um, Hackaday stickers, uh, coasters, lots of swag. We're going to send you to space. Pigs in space. No, engineers in space. To whoever wins the prize. Anyway, it does close um, August or something like that. We've got a poster. I think the... I think the first round of entries or something close in August. So you've got like a month. Ta -da! Here we go. These are just some uh, posters that, well, this is a pack um, that they send out to uh, hacker spaces and uh, stuff like that. So if you do have a hacker space, you're involved or you run a hacker space, uh, contact um, uh, Hackaday and they'll probably send you one of these uh, packs so you can put up the posters and stickers and everything else for the Hackaday prize. Remember, enter and I'm a judge. So you know who you have to suck up to. Okay, that was a bonus one. Uh, okay, that has to be tossed, that has to be tossed, that tossed, that's tossed. All right. Uh, all right, next. Right off the top of the pile. And the next one right off the top of the pile is from Christy Floors from Techtronics. There you go. Thank you very much, Techtronics. Let's see what uh, they have sent. I think it might be just some uh, swag of some description. I don't think it's a. Uh, it's not a, like a new Techtronics product, so don't get uh, too excited, folks. Okay. Wanted to send you and Sagan a couple of MDO 3000 t-shirts. Awesome. I wasn't sure Sagan size, so I sent two. Also include mini USB drive and MDO uh, of the MDO uh, 3000. Sincerely, Amy. Oh, excellent. Oh, right. Okay. It was actually Amy. He's, she's my, uh, she's the marketing uh, person at Tektronix. I thought Sagan might enjoy some American treats too. Oh, look. Oh, look what we have. Look what we have. We have Oreo cookies. Um, I think you can buy Oreos here. I'm not 100% uh, sure though, but I do like the Oreo cookie. Everyone loves Oreos. And, oh, milk chocolate, four peanut butter cups. Mmm, let's give that a go. I, I've never had one of those, so I'm going to give that a pearl. Hang on. Here we go. Peanut butter cup. Hmm. Do you like peanut butter, but oh, I don't know. Sounds a bit. Oh, it's a little. Yeah, it's a little cup which is melted in the. <laughs> Oops. Um. Smells like peanut butter. Hmm. Unusual. Not sure what to make of that, but it, it's pretty much exactly as claimed. This is on a peanut butter sort of wafery biscuit, kind of not quite a wafery biscuit, but a, and then choke uh, coated in milk chocolate. Mmm. Thanks, Amy.
Oh, this is so cute. <laughs> oh, look at this. <laughs> oh, hang on. I can't see the camera. It's a Tektronix MDO 3000 little oscilloscope. That's a USB stick. Look at that. <laughs> that is so cute. Oh my goodness, check this out. That is so cute. Tektronix MDO 3000, <laughs> little mini 3000. <laughs> that is great. They've even got like the, like the, the N connector is bigger than the B and C's. They've all got it right. And it's a USB stick. Ta-da! Oh, that's just fantastic. Really, that is great. <laughs> Never seen something like that before, especially in that sort of format. I mean, you know, that is absolutely enormous, but that's cute just to sit on your desk. I love it. Nice bit of swag. Look at that, it looks just like the real thing. <laughs> Terrific. Well done. And a second sized t shirt. Awesome. And I got one for me too. Beauty. <laughs> so cute. Second sized t shirts. Excellent. Check it out, I like it. Nice shirt and on the back, if you can see it, probably, uh, zero compromise. Where does it, does it say it there somewhere, zero compromise? Don't know about that. The MDO 3000 was a bit of compromise compared to the MDO 4000 because you uh, don't allow the integration with the, with the mixed domain timing uh, trigger integration. Uh, Cute. <laughs> uh. All right. 
bench is filthy. Man, I clean it. Disgusting. All right. Uh, Need a drink. Okay, you're getting bad autofocus, guys. Ah, uh, yeah, all right. Um, it's not like I can't turn. Alright, I've turned autofocus off. I don't know if that is any better, so I assume it's fi Oh! It's got a flicker on the screen. That was Is that the stutter people are talking about? Okay, that, that must be the drop frame thing. Alright, sorry, I'll have to watch the recording at the end of this. There was a, yeah, I saw a big, there was a big black sort of shutter on the, on the screen there. Alright. Hmm. Maybe I'm streaming at too high a bitrate or something that can't uh, keep up. Not sure. It's going to take a lot of effort to get this uh, live um, streaming thing right. You know, there's so, so many little things that can ruin the whole thing. You've got to, you know, it, it takes a lot of experimentation to get it all right before I can do decent, really decent live shows and stuff. So, yeah. Next. Next up, I've got one from Greg Corville, and I know what this is. Um, it's a crowdfunding uh, campaign doodad. So thank you very much, Greg, for sending it in. I think, hopefully, um, oh, I don't know, it could, it could even be finished. I hope not, because um, I didn't do a mailbag last week. Uh, or the week before. <laughs> hope not. Anyway this should be really useful for me what is it I hear I'm glad you asked it is <laughs> if I can get it out of the wrapper it is it is an oh shit button look at this oh shit press it fantastic it's a USB uh, button and um, I need one of these for my uh, the amp hour radio show to have as a microphone mute button or otherwise known as a uh, you know in the industry as a <coughs> cough button so if you're about to cough wham it down and that's a bit noisy though unfortunately maybe I can uh, have it under the desk on you know a foot switch or something and if I'm about to cough or I need to clear my throat or something like that just hold it down and it will mute the mic but this is more than that it'll do any you know anything you can program it to uh, do anything you want so it's an oh shit button let's take a look inside oh 
Okay, very serious button. Let's see. And yes, unfortunately, the campaign is finished, but I'm glad to hear that he actually uh, made the target. So I'm sure if you want one, I'm sure uh, Greg will still sell you one. Enclose is a prototype uh, crowdfunded project, uh, some diet design and manufacturing practice before moving on to something more ambitious. Indiegogo yeah, ends June 21 and it's June 23. The unit is running early firmware that just acts as one button USB game controller and can be DFU with the production firmware once that comes out. Uh, both firmware and the Optional configuration utility will be published open source, of course. PCB is a first test run. Well, slight mix up. Oops. Let's take a look at the packaging material chosen to test the ESD prediction. Nice. And there you go, that's a really quite interesting construction. Two large pads down there that just contact these uh, springs which then go up into the main switch up there. So you don't have to wire the sucker in. That's rather no neat. And it's got, uh, of course, this uh, case uh, chosen. It's just an off-the-shelf uh, case. It's one of these uh, uh, waterproof uh, surround ones. Weatherproof, anyway. Um, so there you go. It's just, yeah, there's a USB micro in there and not much else. Uh, Bob's your uncle. But, hey sure it works. And I love it. There you go. Hi, Dave. <laughs> He's personalised the copper down in there. Brilliant. Good on you, Greg. And yes, that's a um, AT Mega, uh, you know, something or other, some sort of Atmel process down in there, USB interface. And that's all she wrote. And yeah, I'm going to be, I found some uh, software online that allows me to mute the microphone when you get a certain, uh, when you hit a key on the keyboard, and this can simulate a key on the keyboard. So, Bingo, it should work a treat for um, uh, as my cough button for the NPR radio show. Thank you very much, Greg. If you want one of these puppies, I'll link it in down below.
Next up, we've got one from Moritz Zumdick. If I'm pronouncing that one correctly, I don't want to hear that one wrong. Uh, from Stuttgart in Deutschland. Hi to all my German viewers, which is, uh, uh, I think, the third most or second most uh, popular country for the EEV log. So, let's see what he sent. Let's have a look. All right. Moritz, oh. Oh, hello. I've got a note. Let's not read the note yet. What is this? This looks... Ja it's a pulse processor. What on earth is a pulse processor? Oh, 80, 80 kV. <laughs> 80 k electron volts. 20 k, 40 k electron volts. Hmm. Interesting. Um, some sort of one of these, um, uh, you know, something custom designed for physics. Uh, processing or something like that. That's generally why you would uh, need something like this. Bias out power. Mm, let's take a look inside. Aha, uh -huh, yes, it's from a scanning electron microscope, uh, the EDX uh, system. There you go, the energy dispersive X-ray. Um, spectroscopy is an analytical measurement method to characterize the materials of a sample um, and done by measuring the incoming X-rays. The signal is pre-amplified directly at the detector and then processed by the pulse processor and computers used to analyze the elements. Old school circuit design, hopefully a lot more interesting than the typical phones you get. Well, I did get a phone, didn't I, which I didn't uh, tear down, because I'm going to use that sucker. Um, yeah, let's just take the cover off and have a quick poke inside. I do like little mini teardowns on the uh, mailbag. It's quite, it's quite good. I mean, you know, probably this probably doesn't warrant a, you know, a full teardown video, really. So oh, here we go. I'll uh, save opening it for so I am surprised. Yes, as I mentioned probably last time, in my when I do my teardowns, I don't peek inside. First, I uh, I do actually. Uh, it is almost always uh, my exact excitement when I open it. All right, let's crack this thing open. Only four screws on the top, and oh, oh we've been mooned. We're on the bottom side. I should have wire wrapped though. Check it out. Oh, look at all the uh, all the trim pods, all the ten turn trimmers on the front panel. Uh, so yeah, I thought they were, I don't know, I just assumed that they were leads or something like that. I didn't uh, notice that they were trimmer holes and well, you can see the residue on the hand solder. <laughs> Somebody's actually had a go at these because it's different, the solder's different and the, the flux residue is different to these. So this has obviously been repaired at some stage and somebody's just uh, hasn't, haven't bothered to uh, clean the stuff off. Made in the United States of America, USA, USA, USA. That always pisses people off, USA, USA, USA. <clears throat> All right. Uh, uh, and I do like to annoy people a bit, have some fun with them. Otherwise, what's the point? If you can't have fun with your audience, then uh, what's the point? If people get offended, ah. Geez, well, they need to lighten up. They're not, not there. Not my problem. It's their problem. Okay, let's have a look at the top side. All right, let's have a look at the top side here. I need to, oh, there we go. Oh, mooned again. More wire wrapping. Look at that. Jeez. 
it's a, a very interesting it's almost yeah they've got like a prototype area over here so there's a, you know the board's properly laid out it looks like a you know a half decent uh, tape layout for the day and uh, uh, by tape layout I mean like the curved uh, traces you can see on here these are it's obviously done on uh, on uh, tape and film with uh, Bishop graphics or uh, something like that but this is clearly like a prototype area and they've well they've really made use of it check that out that's a bit of a rat's nest but that's what uh, wire wrapping looks like for you youngsters out there who <laughs> are used to getting your uh, five dollar prototype double-sided solder mask silk screen PCB these days uh, well wire wrap was uh, quite big back in the day still is for certain applications and things like that but yeah I don't know we've got something down here it's almost like it's poking up is that like a little pin diode or something like that I don't know you can see the wire coming out of that sucker I should get my macro lens up on that but yeah interesting Oh geez, how do I? I have never seen a right angle uh, spacer like that, PCB spacer. It's like one of those, you know, antenna uh, you know, joint uh, things. And they've used that to screw into the back panel and just hold it freestanding in the middle of the board like that. Awesome. Alright, let's top this all right let's pop this top board out and there's a like a big huge profile dip socket up there I don't know what hey there we go look at that ha oh, look we've got ourselves some uh, read relays whole bunch of like 74 series logic by the looks of it and some read relays in these massive sockets they're absolute look at the side look at the height of these bloody sockets unbelievable Look at the size of those sockets. Oh man, I've rarely seen those. And look at the date code. 70, 20 something weeks, 1979. This thing is ancient.
by the way, this is from a company called uh, Kevex Ray. I'll have to check if they're still around. Probably not. I don't know. Who knows? You never know your luck in the big city. But uh, 4529 is the model number and uh, serial number 47-91. Yeah, I think they made 91 of these. Um, they haven't made 47,000 of these suckers. I don't think there's 47,000 electron scanning microscopes in existence in the world, are there? Probably not, but yeah, classic sort of, you know, basically low volume, late 70s construction technique. Every, most things are socketed, not everything. Uh, well, on this board, actually, it looks like everything's socketed, but on this, like, um, I don't know, it's like a preamp. It's probably not a preamp, because the preamp is the other box which we got, which we'll have to have a look at. But uh, these two are soldered in, for example. Don't know what that package there. No, <laughs> That package is hilarious. I might have to get the macro lens up on that, but yeah, um, basically nothing fancy. LM311 uh, comparators, 7474LS uh, series logic. There's even some 7400 uh, stuff, not even low power uh, shock key. And then we've got some uh, Sigma read relays. In uh, You can still get this form factor read relay, of course, in the uh, dip package like that. Absolutely classic. And uh, yeah, late 70s design. And all, you know, hand-wired, everything, you know, just look, and they're loomed and cable-tied and everything else. But, yeah, this is what you get in these sort of uh, custom, not quite one-off jobs, but very low-volume purpose design things for these scanning electron microscopes. So, you know, the scan electron microscope is probably more work goes into the, uh, you know, the physics uh, side of it and the mechanical side of it than the electronics. So they don't, you know, they're not going to produce a 1,000 or 10,000 of these things. So... You know, this is certainly adequate uh, construction technique for um, its purpose. Oh, run out of battery. Look at that puppy. What is that? <laughs> that is hilarious. It's like the old, you know, the round can uh, package, but it's some sort of just potted, uh, you know, cylinder. I've got no idea. And these things here, they were just the mini uh, coax is uh, screwed, you know, screwed and then soldered down into the board, and then just the center of the coax is coming out like that. Nothing fancy. It's a very quick tear down, <clears throat> that's for sure.
attention. And there's our preamp. Check it out. It just uh, slid out of the uh, aluminium case like that. And just nice, you know, <laughs> nice little preamp. Nothing fancy. It's like a discrete transistor. That's just an LMR311 comparator. And uh, that's all she wrote inside that thing. So some, just some sort of uh, discrete transistor. Front end, I'm not going to look at individual uh, parts, but there you go. That's what you got for uh, one of these special purpose devices back then. So. Thank you very much, Maritz. That made for a very interesting little uh, teardown. If people do have like a data sheet on this thing or a schematic or uh, something like that, please leave it in the comments for this particular uh, model anyway. And uh, yeah, thank you very much, Maritz. That does make certainly for a more interesting teardown than a phone. That's for sure. Awesome. Ran out of battery. Yeah. There's something wrong with my charger because that battery is sitting on the charger. So 94 minutes left. Yet yeah, I'll get. I'll finish this in 94 minutes. Oops. Go check the model number on that. Could be a schematic. Next up, Max Brodfuhrer from Germany. Again, jeez, you Germans are uh, really having a couple of sucks of the salve at the mailbag, that's for sure. I don't mind. I love German, love Germany. Do want to go back. 
one day. Haven't, I've only been to uh, Hamburg and Lübeck. Haven't been anywhere else. Hamburg and Lübeck. That's it. So let's uh, have a look at what we've got in here. Hey, what's Max sent? Ain't hey, nice. Bell Bellafeld, if I'm pronouncing correctly. Nice little town in. Oh, very lovely. Nice little town in. Uh, well, it's a nice little town in Germany. Let's have a look here. Lots of padding. We've got a uh, parts list. And. Alright. Oh ho! Oh ho! Look at this. Look at this. Oh. No, oh, it's a Metrowatt! It's a Metrowatt analog multimeter! Oh, isn't that a thing of beauty? And a joy forever. Look at that! Look at that! Oh, beautiful! <laughs> Metrowatt! I've never... Unigore A43. I've never seen it nor heard of it, but... Ah, oh, that is a very nice... And the parts list, I assume that we've... Have we got a pass list? Have we got a schematic? We do! We have a schematic! Look at that! <laughs> I can't uh, pronounce that. I've got no chance in hell of pronouncing that. There's not much in an analog uh, meter at all. I mean, there's the meter movement there. We've got diode protection across the meter movement. Then we've got uh, switching nanofarads. It measures, um, measures capacitance. No! No, no, that's right. I don't know what's going on there, but uh, yeah, look, nanofarads times one times ten. It does capacitance. Are you kidding me? Unbelievable. We've got ourselves a gained switch here. That's just beautiful. Oh, look at that. Could play with that all day long. Really could. Fantastic. <laughs> look at that. Uh, that. That's a reset, is it? And we've got a thermal. Um, we've got an overload in there, perhaps. Or it's some sort of locking. No, I don't. No idea. Oh, let's crack that sucker open. I'll tell you what, this thing weighs a ton and it's built like the proverbial brick dunny, it really is. And got ourselves a uh, cheat sheet on the back and it's in fantastic condition as well. Apart from the number five painted on it for, you know, whoever owned this uh, previously, that's in fantastic condition, it really is. I might, maybe, I should save that for a separate teardown. What do you think? Hmm. Should I make this a separate teardown? Oh, I just love analog. I can do it tomorrow. Make a nice little teardown. Keep people waiting. That is beautiful. checking out that's a hundred K ohms per volt that was a kick-ass analog meter it really was very high sensitivity meter at 100 K ohms per volt they didn't get much higher than that uh, really you had to go to a FET input one if you wanted that but yeah oh this thing just ekes quite you know this thing just reeks of quality it really does I love it <laughs> oh
<clears throat> Hi Dave, I had this old puppy collecting dust on my shelf since you're obsessed with multimeters just a bit and vintage electronics. I thought you might like it. Yes, I do. I think it's worthy of just a separate nice little teardown video because I think this mailbag is going to be lo uh, long enough so I'm going to leave it. Bugger it. I'll do it in tomorrow's teardown. Uh, it was learning how to use a multimeter at a vocational school seven years ago. They thinks, he thinks they're still using them to teach how to read an analog scale. I'm surprised they're still teaching them to read analog scales. That's fantastic. Thank you very much, Max. That is awesome. And he's provided some links here as well for the uh, user manual and stuff, which I'll provide down below. size battery. I don't think I've got a C size battery. 1%. All right. Alright, is it still within spec? What I'm going to do is, uh, of course, if you change the orientation of these things, you should uh, tweak the zero, so correct tongue angle. Oh, sorry. That should have been a horrible shot. We're probably zoomed in there, but... Uh, there we go. Zero that, and plug it in. Oh, pretty close. Pretty close, pretty close to bang on. Oh, sorry. Uh, that should have been a horrible shot. We probably zoomed in there, but. 
Now, of course, you've just got to get the mirror there to avoid parallax error on this thing. So this shot is, I think it's pretty close, but look at that. I mean, that's as close to bang on. There's a needle width in that. Unbelievable. This is a beauty. Oh, Goss and Metrobot. Now, of course, the good thing about analog meters is that you don't need the battery in them to uh, read DC volts like that. You only need it for the uh, ohms range, and in this case, the capacitance uh, range. I'm absolutely fascinated by the capacitance range. Looks like it takes a CC size battery. I'm not sure if I've actually got one. A uh, little HRC fuse, two little fuse holders in there. Beautiful. And the cover plate, uh, of course, look at that. It slips under there, so it can't just a single screw to hold it in place, and all the info you need is on there. Look, we're talking about a spec of 1% there. That's pretty darn good for an analog meter. 1.5% uh, over the AC, for the AC, 1% on ohms, 2% on capacitance there, N nanofarads and... There we go, does it go up to... Uh... Looks like we're talking 100 millivolts up to a thousand volt uh, range there, and of course the 100 uh, k ohms per volt is going to give you 100 uh, mega ohms input impedance there up at the uh, thousand volt range. So there you go, very impressive meter. There's the nanofarad uh, ranges there. There we go, from one nanofarad to 100 goes up to 10 mic. Three usable ranges there. Beautiful. So thank you very much, Max. That is just awesome. And yeah, I think I love vintage stuff like this. So even though it'll be quick, it deserves its own teardown video, I think. So I'll do that one tomorrow. Thanks, Max. Oh, oh. And here's a name you should be familiar with. If you don't, well, I'll put the link in down below. Ben Heckendorn, who uh, runs the Ben Heck Show on uh, Element uh, for Well, the Elements 14 sponsored Ben Heck Show. And um, we know what this is. This is no surprise to anyone who follows me on uh, Twitter or, uh, or watches the Ben Heck, Heck Show, that's for sure. But uh, anyway, this was his one of his latest uh, projects he did. And... 
He sent it to me so that I could give away to someone in the EV Log audience. So we shall give it away. And ta-da! Look! <laughs> Beautiful! Look at this. It is my own personalized um, speaking game thing or whatever they're called. Does it just work? No, I think he's no. He's taped in the battery separate. Let's put it in. Anyway, he's uh, modified one of these uh, kids games to speak my uh, phrases and stuff like that. Oh no, that's coming off there. But anyway, let's power this puppy up. your wrapping All right, let's see if it works. Here we go. I'll put the batteries in. I, I don't know if there's an on-off switch on this. Oh, oh, no, hang on. So you, you select a, uh, a thing. Let's, let's do my hand thing down here. There's contacts inside. If you want to see how this thing is uh, built and how Ben modified it, uh, then I'll link in his video here. So, oh, yeah, there we go. Lead's on. thing about that is that um, it, there's no delay so you hear the thing it, it starts playing uh, just as it's pulling back so you get the noise from that thing um, so that's the only <laughs> this is great Ben's done a great job with this Oh, this is great. <laughs> oh, fail. No, oh, I didn't like that one. <laughs> that is great. That is awesome. Thank you very much, Ben, for uh, letting me give this thing away. So I guess, um, I don't know, what's the fair... Uh, fairest thing, I don't know, do I pick someone at random? Oh, yeah, yeah. alright, I'll just pick someone at random. If you want this thing, leave it in the comments and uh, I'll pick somebody. <laughs> Tell me why you want it and the person with the best story why you want it, in my opinion, will get it. Thank you very much, Ben. I won't bother taking it apart because there is a whole video Ben's done a whole video on how he modified and built this thing and it is uh, quite comprehensive so go check it out thank you very much and check out the Ben Heck show I'll link it in down below but wait we've got extra Look at this. Ah, oh, yeah, that position there doesn't really doesn't like that one at all. Nah. <laughs> oh, that's great. <clears throat>
Oh, that's the time, almost four. Jeez. People still hanging in there? <sighs> Pick someone from the live stream. <laughs> This one's a local one from Paul Henderson. Thank you very much. He's from uh, Morayfield in Queensland. He's a bloody Queenslander. <laughs> we kicked your ass in the state of Oregon. Absolutely kicked it. Yes. Right, the hoodoo. Sorry for all my non-Australian view viewers. You'll have no idea what I'm talking about. I'm sure uh, Paul will though. My cat says hello. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh iPhone, iPhone, that looks like one of those older ones. It feels quite small and quite heavy. I've never had an iPhone uh, before. Yeah, it's a 16 gig. Is that like the original? Because I assume that they printed the, like, you know, iPhone 5 on the back or whatever it is. An original um, iPhone. See, I don't know anything about iPhone. All the Apple fanboys going, oh, dude, of course it's an original model, blah, 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 blah. Like, yeah, tell someone who cares. Uh, bloody iPhone. Hi, Dave. I know the number of mobile phones you've been getting in the mailbag that I contribute my old phone. Enjoy. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I do have a whole bunch of old phones. So that will be a teardown one day of just a whole bunch of retro phones. And I guess the iPhone is now ancient. Go figure. And another local one from Josh. Thank you very much, Josh. He's from Sleepy South Australia. And uh, let's crack it open and uh, see what. Oh, more, more phones. I've got a bunch of phones. Geez, I got more folk. Crossword puzzle. Ah, oh, right. Yeah, I think my mum used to have one of these little things. It's just going to have like one ASIC in it. Um, I got no shortage of phones. To, oh man, that is crusty as. Oh, look at that. That has seen better days. Crikey, look at that. Unbelievable. All right, let's crack this one open. Just have a, like a single uh, chip on board ASIC. That's about it.
was completely off the mark. Look at this, it's got two chip on board devices, of course, the main ASIC plus an LCD uh, controller for the uh, custom or dot matrix or whatever. It wouldn't be an off the shelf um, LCD. Is it even uh, powered up? It's got a battery in it. Uh, on, off, on, no, no, dead as a dodo. But uh, yeah, these things are, yeah, there's just nothing in them. Just a purpose design ASIC and that's it. They churn out a million of these things and Bob's your uncle. And I'm going to say something else, I guess. I'll just leave it at that. And there you go, there's our uh, custom ASIC, just a bare die there, uh, chip on board. It's called COB technology because the uh, chip is mounted directly onto the board and then the bond wires, they just uh, uh, wire in the bond wires. So they stick down the uh, die with the glue and then they just wire the bond, weld the bond wires over to the individual uh, traces on there. There's uh, not much to it at all. It's a very cheap technique and check out all the test points. I mean, they've got test points on practically every line here. There would have been a big uh, bed of nails uh, tester for this thing. And oh, look at some of the shoddy. So that's not reflow. These are hand soldered. Some poor sucker has hand soldered those and that's pretty awful. It was uh, late on a Friday afternoon. They couldn't wait to get home. Indie Griffiths. Sorry, I had to whistle it. Uh, from Dunedin in New Zealand. Hi to all my New Zealand viewers. Don't get many uh, mailbags from New Zealand. Anyway, Indie very cool name that was actually one of my um choices for uh sagan's name by the way <laughs> indy <laughs> and there was no way she who must be obeyed would uh, allow indy it was hard enough to get her to uh accept sagan so anyway thank you very much indy that is an awesome name oh 4d systems okay 4d systems stuff 4D Systems are a local company here in uh, Sydney and uh, they, so I don't know why they come in from New Zealand, but uh, it's, well, I'll read the note. Hope all is well across the ditch. It is indeed. Include a 4D systems up micro LCD 43 LCD module. Yes, they are an Aussie company. They are here in uh, Sydney. They're out in the western suburbs there. I know exactly where they are. Um, here, originally bought this, uh, but the project fell through. It's a resistive touch version. If you, once you have hooked it up to a Raspberry Pi or a Dino, you can listen to the screen through your code for when action occurs. Oh, okay, interesting. Um, yeah, 4D systems. There are uh, makers of. Um, uh, pretty awesome little uh, LCD. They started out as just one LCD module, but now, um, geez, that's, wow, look at that, that one, that is enormous. That is huge, look at that. I might have fun playing with that now. Oh, well, I don't have enough time for the mailbag now, but uh, that's gonna be fun. Got a little card reader and uh, a little um, header interface. Nice, look at that, beautiful. Anyway, check out 
4D systems, but more importantly, check out Andy's website, uh, Indy's website, indygriffiths.com. Thanks, Indy. And yes, uh, 4D systems have their own uh, chipset that handles all the graphics and uh, stuff like that and their own uh, uh, language and uh, uh, codes for actually displaying information on the LCD modules easily. It's called the Picasso uh, chipset and there you go, <laughs> they've got their own Picasso chipset. I mean, I don't think they've spun custom silicon for it, but obviously, um, you know, it could be a, repro a fixed uh, programmed uh, micro or FPGA or something like that. So this really is a sweet look of module. I mean, it's 480 by uh, 272 RGB, full color RGB module, 4.3 inch uh, TFT. Look at this, hardware version 7.01. Geez, they're serious there. And it's got a little onboard speaker and a uh, little micro SD card and uh, that can play uh, WAV files and can do all sorts of weird and wonderful stuff. There is a touch version. This, yes, this is a touch version. As you can see the uh, touch screen on top there coming out and uh, it's available in uh, not touch and non-touch and various things and they've got a whole 40 systems have a whole ton of these different boards um this one's you know not uh, cheap i think it's retails about um 99 or something like that but fully integrated just works off the shelf so i'm really going to look forward to uh, playing around with one of these puppies i've been meaning to get um some of these from attila 
actually, I think he did actually approach me uh, once and said, do I uh, want some? I think I said, send them into the mailbag and I don't think he followed up. Anyway, Attila, I've got one. Oh, if you want to send some more, that'd be cool too. Lucky last, I can't believe we got through them all. This is from uh, Lassie Jorgensen in Denmark. Hi to all my Danish viewers. Let's crack it open. Be very Ah, oh, it's calculator. It's calculator. It's a TI. I'm not a TI man. I'm a Casio man or a HP man. Oh, it doesn't even work. There you go. Once again, we can crack it open. But there's nothing in there. There's going to just be a single chip on board. I my search for something uh, different in a box of old electronic stuff found this calculator. Did you think it? Uh, did think of you right away? So here it is. I hope you have test. I have not tested it. Well, there you go. <laughs> Thank you very much, um, Hassi. If I'm pronouncing that correctly, let's crack it open. And that'd be why she doesn't work. There we go. We don't have our uh, LR44 batteries in there. And we've got ourselves a um, flex uh, membrane uh, battery contact there, which means most likely uh, entire there won't even be a printed circuit uh, board in here, a regular rigid uh, PCB, and maybe just one big flex uh, PCB. But there's no screws on this. Looks like it's a, it's a welded shut job. I can fix that. <laughs> Oops, it just completely fell apart and it wasn't welded shut, it was just uh, press fit and uh, there's our rubber matting on the top and ta-da, I was right, complete flex membrane, oh look at that, ooh, you get seasick watching that, look at that, and they've just got a dip uh, package just soldered directly under there, through hole dip, and Bob's your uncle, look at that, nothing else in these things, that's all they are, single chip solution, practically every calculator is exactly the same. And it's interesting to note how they've bent those pins over on that dip package before they were uh, presumably reflow soldered on that sucker. So there you go.
and the LCD here. And the LCD here, this is interesting, it's just got a clip-on connector like that. This will just start, this whole thing will just start slide off and the LCD will just come out. That's a very nice novel little way to uh, just retain the LCD onto that uh, flat flex. The contacts will be on this side over here. Underneath there, there'll be a uh, the zebra strip under there, of course, and uh, just, well, may not it may even just be pressing against the glass I'm not sure most likely a little zebra strip surely <clears throat> no I was wrong on that one look at that they've just stuck it down to the LCD like that. There you go. No zebra strip at all. Feel that. Too easy. And that's actually a classic example of cost reduction in uh, mass-produced products. Oh, we've got a date code there, um, six week 91, so 1991 vintage there. And like they've done absolutely everything possible to get the price down on this sucker. I mean, they've got the off-the-shelf shelf, um, They've done absolutely everything to get the price down on this because you know PCB are ah, too expensive. No, we'll just do a couple of sheets of membrane there. Too easy, and we won't. Uh, we'll just reflow the solder pins on there. That's it. I mean, there's no passives at all. There's not nothing else. There's just the single custom ASIC chip, which they turn out for peanuts once they've got their um, once they've paid for the um, engi engineering on that, and uh, and then just this retaining clip. For the LCD, like that's it's just ridiculous. So there's what are uh, five parts? There's two sheets of membrane here. So there's two sheets of membrane, the chip, uh, the LCD, and a retaining clip. Unbelievable. No wonder they can uh, get these things down to peanuts. Ouch. I had some glass shatter here. Whoops. And we've got a postcard, Siberian Tigers here from Tristan. Thank you very much, Tristan. And we had this one saved over for a future mailbag from Gepetto Electronics in Santa Clara, California. Let's rip it open. Lucky last, this is it. God, I don't know how long this mailbag's been, but it's been a two or three hour shoot. People still hanging in there in the live show. Ah, oh, it's just a letter.
And of course, it is from uh, Nick, who's been from Gepetto Electronics, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, and he's just uh, talking about uh, a um, charging and electric vehicle uh, charging station uh, cable and plug set that he's done. And as he says, it's not as easy as you think. And well, yeah, I think he's right. Anyway, um, I'll post the link in for the code. There's no interest in uh, hardware. He just sells the boards. But for those into electric cars, check out his Hydra project. Tripod. <clears throat> so there you go. That's it for the mailbag. And thanks to all my viewers who uh, joined in. Not sure how many. Um, there was like 50 or 60 or something last time I looked. So. There you go, um, sign up to my EEV Log 2 live page if this is probably where I'll put uh, live mailbag videos and other stuff like that, which I, if you want to actually watch me spend a couple of hours shooting this thing live and see what happens behind the scenes, then uh, go over to EEV Log, dot, uh, EEV Log 2. So it's youtube.com slash EEV Log 2. Catch you next time. Oh, that's it. Done. Dusted. 4.30. Holy crap. I haven't got enough time to edit. Oh no, two hours. There we go. Took me two hours. Alright guys. Um, hope it wasn't too shitty. Oh yeah, look, the autofocus is completely off. Because I didn't, don't have the autofocus on. There we are, turned on. And is it coming good? No. Turn on the right light. No. Jeez, it, it looks a bit fuzzy. Looks, it doesn't look high definition to me. Anyway, how's the frame rate? Looks pretty good on the screen. But uh, who knows? Anyway, thanks guys. I've got to go edit this. Uh, got to go edit this video. Peak concurrent users, 57. There you go. So thanks for joining me, uh, impromptu live. And uh, average view duration, 13 minutes. There you go. So anyway, I hope this worked. So I'll stop my local recording. Actually, I'll go check it out. Hang on. I'll just go check my local recording. See what it looks like. Uh, date. Oh, oh I bought oh, yeah, it's pretty, unbelievable. pretty crusty. All this. I, I don't have speakers on this machine yet, so. So, thank you very much, Maritz. That made for a very interesting little uh, teardown. If people do have like a data sheet on this thing it or a schematic, to be 1280 or by like 720. That, leave it in the comments but for this geez, particular no, that model. Look anyway, it. and uh, yeah, thank you very much. That does, does not look that 1280 does make by 720. Certainly, from more interesting. Oh, okay. I think what's happened is this sure. X split awesome. thing. I think it was actually 640 by 480, and I've just expanded it. I got it wrong. Ran out of battery. <laughs> I yeah. think that's what it is. Sorry so much for my HD broadcast. Oops. I've got to learn to read. Uh, I've got to learn to use XSplit. So, but it seems to have, seems to have held in there. Um, There's something wrong for my charger. Yeah, that, that, that looks like 640 sitting by on the charger, something quality. So that's not. Yeah. No. Okay. 94 minutes left. Yeah. yeah something I'll wrong there. That's a pebcac. That's me. We'll finish this in 94 that's minutes. Fault. Layout cam. Configure the cam. Oops. Yeah, device info. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to have to work on this a bit. So there you go. That is definitely not full high definition. That is ordinary. Yeah, it's okay. It was 25, 26 frames per second laughing logic. 
at 720p, but it doesn't look like 720p quality. It looks looks much lower than that. Anyway, yeah, thanks guys. I've got to go edit. Catch you next time.